it's held up with these corner brackets and our Raspberry Pi is mounted upside down with our IMU right here, right next to it. Um, and our CubeSat fits well within our 1U size limit and we use um, only materials that are given to us in our kits. So here's the power budget that we use to calculate our power consumption for our mission. So if you see right here, our time step was 10 seconds. So we spend um, about 10 seconds in each mode down here. Um, we have our time with each mode for our entire 10 minute mission. And we also have our power draw, our power in, which is zero because we didn't use our solar panel. And then um, we calculated our battery capacity to estimate our battery percent. So we estimated that we would finish at about 98% or if we're not at 100, we would finish 2% lower than how we started. And we use all of this data to create these charts. So here are our power draw per mode and our battery percentage over time. I'm Claudia and I'm gonna be going over the results of our flight, including the telemetry packets received the photos taken, and our plastic statistics. Here is the first photo we took on flight day. You'll see that it's quite dark and it wasn't able to be processed with image processing. Here are two more photos we took on flight day. Both were able to be processed using our image processing code. And here are two more which, while not being able to be processed, are quite identifiable by their pictures. Additionally, here's an example of a telemetry packet we received during one of our orbits. This was unfortunately one of the only telemetry packets we received. Many Pies were not able to connect to Bluetooth, and the Pi that received this telemetry packet seemingly shut down afterwards. Lastly, here are two examples of the plastic statistics we were able to calculate by hand for multiple boards. One of our mission goals was to be able to identify the colors of different plastics, which we were able to achieve. Overall, the mission was a success. We were able to get photos of most of the boards and figure out the plastic statistics. However, we did so by hand. Now you'll hear about our image processing code and why it didn't work on every photo. The images received from our orbit are then processed through a color detection algorithm using OpenCV, which takes the images, finds pixels of red, green, and blue, and draws a contour around them which is then identified as a piece of plastic of a certain size. Although it was able to frequently detect the correct colors and sizes, there were certain sources of error that made it inconsistent. One of our sources of error were camera and lighting issues. The lighting between our spaces was inconsistent between homes, and some images were too dark or had different shades of background that affected the ability of color detection. Additionally, Many of the pictures were very blurry due to the motion of the CubeSat. We also didn't account for when the plastic pieces were touching, which was overlooked by our color detection script. The magnetometer that was used to determine orbital position had some issues as well. It was very prone to interference from nearby objects. For example, a magnetic screwdriver or desk fan could completely invert the sense magnetic field, and thus finding the targets was difficult to achieve consistently. We also had one case where a magnetometer failed completely and without warning, requiring new control logic to be written on very short notice. Both the magnetometer and the attached gyroscope failed at the same time, so we suspect a fault in the board or communications. Given more time, we would have liked to develop a sensor fusion approach where the magnetometer and gyroscope could be used in tandem in order to reduce inaccuracies, as well as provide some level of redundancy. In terms of power, our power budget expected the power draw to be only 2% during orbit. However, because the battery only goes down a full percent at a time, the measured drop before and after orbits was often inconsistent, as we measured battery drops from a range of 1 to 3 percent. We may also want to use more precision measuring devices for future projects, as our current power budget was based on an arguably inconsistent USB multimeter. The same setup procedure, we often got wildly different results. If we had more time and particularly more budget, we would have liked to go for a simpler, dedicated radio transmitter that would have less of the configuration issues that we encountered. 
two days ago, we set up our orbit simulation. Three poster boards on the ground spaced evenly around a circle, with pieces of colored plastic on top to be imaged by our CubeSats. There were five rounds, one per team member, and during each round, one CubeSat went through ten orbits each minute long, which we've sped up here for your convenience. Despite some issues with connecting to the CubeSat remotely and determining where we were in the orbit, we were able to get pictures of a couple of the boards which we'll go into later. However, our orbit simulation was a significant source of errors in our flight. As you can hopefully see in the video, our CubeSats were held at different heights in each round, and as you can expect, it is hard to not shake the CubeSat while in orbit. This may have affected our position determination and our image quality, and may have even contributed to a faulty connection between the CubeSat and the ground station. After reflecting on our flight results, we have learned that testing throughout is crucial, and it is even more crucial to test on the individual elements before integrating. This makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot because there are less things you have to look at. Lastly, you need a backup plan for if a system fails or if a connection falters. Without this, your mission could be jeopardized. Now, taking this and applying it to real-world applications, we can look at real CubeSat missions. One of our biggest issues was that our Bluetooth connection didn't always work, and for some of us, it never even connected. This meant we weren't able to download the images during our flight, and we had to go back afterwards and move them from our Pies to our GitHub. Now, in a real flight, you'd have to relentlessly test your communication system before sending it into space. Without doing so, like our mission, you may not receive any data and the mission might not be successful. Additionally, we learned that even though your code might work theoretically, you need to test it out. Now, we ran our code a lot, but when it came to flight day, it didn't all work. For example, our image processing code didn't process all the images, only ones that are clear. Now, this meant that we weren't able to get our statistics from our code, making our job a lot harder. Additionally, since our Bluetooth system had failed for some of our computers, this meant we were doing it after we had to move those images. This meant that the process took a lot longer than it would have if it had been fully automated. Now, in order to ensure mission success, realistic tests should be taken before sending a satellite into orbit, and it needs to be ensured that all the code works on its own and together so that your mission can be successful. Well, that concludes the video. We hope you all enjoyed.